Hello, internet friends. My name is Bay. Welcome back to Final Fantasy 14 Endwalker MSQ for patch 6.3. This is the very beginning. Once more onto the void, Barshan's eyes seem to brighten at your arrival. Ah, Bay, as always, your timing is most fortuitous. I wish to share with you news concerning Zero. You'll recall that in exchange for Ether, she agreed to aid us in our search for my sister. Yes. Ether? Yather? How do you pronounce that word? Sound off in chat or the comments. How do you pronounce Aether? As Shistola suggested, I begin providing said Ether in the form of food. Zero has found the arrangement to be agreeable and has been eating steadily. In large part due to that, she claims to have already made a full recovery. If you and the others are ready as well, I will set forth for the void once more. Excellent. I shall inform Yustola and Istinian and then go collect my other vessel from the alchemists. In the meantime, but I ask you to fetch Zero. She was absent when I visited her chambers earlier, but I suspect you will find her in the corridor connecting Hyuj and Kama. It seems she's grown partial to the view of the city it affords. Once we have attended to our respective task, let us gather here. So where the hell is she? Oh, she's on the overlook. Got it. The overlook it is. Let me go over here to the... Right? Let me go... I think so. Because there's a big walkway over here. We do be running. Yeah. It's like the sky bridge. Who's she standing with? I guess not. There we go. Okay. Hello, Zero. It's cutscene time. Everyone is so carefree. Mm. We've gone through a lot. And unconcerned in spite of their weakness. And how easily their lives could be torn apart in an instant. Such luxuries are lost to us. We have no hopes or dreams. And even the release of death. Only hunger. The life of a void scent. Others hmm. are a means to an end. At times, a literal one. We forge covenants with men and come here to feed or to die. I thought it would be no different when I was summoned by Xenos. Lives were tools to him, to be used and discarded at whim. In that respect, he was a void sent at heart. Hmm. But towards you, and you alone, he behaved differently. <laughs> and I cannot fathom why. Uh, because we were rivals in a JRPG. I don't know if she's ever read the script before or ever watched Pokemon or any JRPG. The protagonist and the antagonist are always rivals. Or it's like Deku and Bakugo in My Hero Academia, or almost every anime imaginable. What was it that drove him? What made him choose such an end? Hmm. But enough about that man. He is dead, and we are all better for it. Why are you here? Was there something you needed? Hmm. 
Ah, uh, yes. The old protagonist has no voice. So you're heading back now. Then as per our bargain, I will go as well. That paladin armor looks so good. We're gonna turn voice volume up a little bit more. Yes! And we should be good. We're we just running all the way back. <laughs> yep. This game still does that a bit. But we were talking about this in Discord the other day about we've been playing some World of Warcraft from the side. And speaking of which, there are seven recent world of warcraft streams that are all about well depending on recent when you watch this or if you're watching it live depends but the i'm just gonna run the world of warcraft dragonflight stuff checking things out talking about it doing some dungeons working on my character you know a little bit here and there we've cleared normal razageth with just 10 10 gamers from the community it's fine it's still it comes up with the drip feed of loot and i was talking about that at the end of the seventh day of streaming uh wow dragonflight at least in that little junket is that there is a very there's a very real mobile game feel still just due to the lack of agency in your loot choices you just kind of like maybe get something every week maybe not <laughs> but keep subscribed because maybe you will and maybe it'll be good it's so weird even with all the new crafting and stuff it's still like you need to farm a bunch of materials to level up an item and then the item that you get isn't even like max eye level so it's not even an end game piece of gear it only goes so high so then you have to farm another set of 10 items to upgrade that item again and then you're basically at the cap but then, of course, Mythic Raid still has the highest eye level in the game, which is, you know, that's fair. By six eye levels or five or six eye levels, something like that. It just, it makes you, it feels weird, man. Anyway, back to Final Fantasy. So much ether. I can't remember the last time I felt such fullness. I could get used to this. Ayishtola. I've been at the great work discussing our experiences in the void with the alchemists. So they have found... Much of it's surprising, they were especially shocked to learn that darkness prevents souls from finding rest. Alright. If you're ready to get back to it, then so am I. Estinian voice is returned. <laughs> Everyone is here? Hello, Varshan. Good. Let us set forth for the void once more. Okay. Okay. What? What? You what coming? Is it? You coming? What happened? Oh. Yes, hello. I am Dragon. He's calling. What is the meaning of this? What? Unless I'm mistaken, that was intended for one of your kin. Who? It was for the briefest of moments, but I felt her. Ashdayer. If you're not following, that big dragon that just roared is also this very handsome uh, lizard boy and also the small one, too. <laughs> they are. These two are his simulacrums that he can interact with people without being, you know, a, a dragon. I thought she was in the void. As did I. Yet, the presence was unmistakable. Thus did I call out, 
Only for it to fade and vanish. Hmm. Perhaps she crossed over to the source, then immediately turned back. I do not know. Could she have found a way home? The how of it aside, if she was indeed in the source, there may be clues where she came through that could lead us back to her. Where exactly was it that you felt her presence? Far to the north. That was all I could discern. Okay. The north, you say? Beyond the bounty? Garlemald? As good a place to start as any. My apologies, Zero, but your return to the Void will have to wait. I told you before that I have no reason to go back there. Do as you will. Okay. All right. I presume you wish to stay here in Radzat Han until we return. You've kept me amply fed. <laughs> I wouldn't be averse to helping you on your search. Uh-huh. Sure. Absolutely. If Ashdaya was indeed here, other Void Scent may have made the journey as well. Maybe? Very well. We would welcome your company. If it's decided, then I'll contact our associates in Garlemald. The twins. Still talking everyone's ears off, I trust. <laughs> Understood. We'll see you there. Big brother calls little brother. We're to rendezvous at Tertium. Yep. We'll need to teleport to make it there in time. Can you? Hmm, that's actually an interesting question. Because Zero is not the same... I don't know. <laughs> Aetheric density? I... I know it well from my time as an avatar. Okay. Then it seems we're all set. If there is nothing else, let us see to our final preparations. Title drop. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Bam, 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 bam. Still think the voice volume can go up a little more. Let's just, I don't know. Let's just go all the way up. Wait, sorry, sorry. Sister, was it really you? We have no reason to doubt of Ritra. Let us depart for Garlemald as soon as possible. So that was a dragon's roar? Quite a trick. Imbuing one's voice with ether. True, it was very wibbly wobbly wibbly wobbly wibbly. Oh, excuse me, excuse, excuse me, you're Honestinian? All right. Quest number two, a cold reunion. Estinian is understandably bewildered. By all accounts, Ashdaya is Golbez's prisoner. Yet if she was in the source, it could be that she managed to escape from the void if only for a fleeting moment. Sorry, sorry. <clears throat> but that is mere conjecture. If you want the truth, you must go and find it. Come, let us make for Tertium. Our friends are waiting. <laughs> oh, cutscene teleport? I guess we are right by the Aetherite, but we didn't actually conduct with the... And you stole a changed? She's in her, her cold outfit. And so is Varshan. Okay. 
There's also a giant chocobo in the way. I'm sorry, Zero. That's my that's, that's my son. My son, please. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Gosh. People live in such places, do they? Not that I would presume to know their preferences, but it seems uncomfortable. I trust you know the associates who will be joining us. Hopefully they have been keeping well. Yes, I watched the trailer. <laughs> I thought to depart to Razat Hod, oh, from Razat Hod sooner, but Ishtola insisted in bringing, I bring warmer clothes. Oh, this vessel does not feel cold as such, but she reminded me that as long as I am Varshan, it will be prudent not to appear overly conspicuous. Yeah, if you were just a lad out here walking around in just like light desert-ish clothes, it would look a little weird because we are literally in the snow-covered mountainous region of Garlemald all of a sudden. All right, Estinian, grumble at me. Any moment now. Oh, gosh. Suspense. My friends, tis good to see you again. <laughs> There they are. And you. I was worried that the cold wouldn't agree with you, but you're both looking quite well. So weird. So strange emotional connection to all these characters in this damn game. Probably because I played through the entire story and up through Endwalker in about a year. So it was quite the whirlwind of emotional storytelling. But I also haven't seen the twins in... It's been eight months? I don't think we've seen the twins since like last April, May. It's been a long time because they weren't in the last two in any meaningful way. Just like having not seen a friend or a family member in, in half a year or something like that, right? It's just wild. Very, very cool. What are you two up to? Besides freezing your butts off out here. You get used to it. It helps that there's no shortage of fuel and heaters like before. Glad to hear it. Have you been working in Garlemald all this time? We have. Though the worst is behind them, the people still have a long road ahead. With the nation in ruins and the leadership void yet to be filled, there remains a lack of direction, mm. a pervasive sense of aimlessness and worry. Okay. Still, everyone wants to make things better. And we're here to help. A lot of Garleans wanted nothing to do with us, but they're starting to come round. Slowly, but surely. I wonder how what, what the timeline is in the game. Because the official timeline for everything in the first... Saga of Final Fantasy XIV, the Zodiac Hydaelyn Saga, the Light and Dark Saga, essentially. All of that MSQ takes place in the span of roughly a year. Which is just awful, considering if you condense that entire story to the span of a year, it's so much. It's so much, so we're, we're just moving past that timeline essentially you're doing a fine job or it sounds like quite the undertaking yeah hit him with a one you're too kind but it's thanks to the cooperation of like-minded souls that we've been able to make any progress the Allied Nations continue to send supplies, which allow us to meet basic needs such as food and shelter. Meanwhile, Ulyss and a number of soldiers have begun a restoration initiative, with more and more volunteers joining by the day. Like Alphano said, they've got a long road ahead of them. But we'll get there together, one step at a time. <laughs> 
But enough about events here. What brings you to us? And with new company besides. Yeah, we definitely have not met Zero. This is going to be interesting. Are we going to say the entire story of who Zero is? That she's a void sent from the 13th, which is the realm. It's a, one of the shards <laughs> that fell to darkness and the void. And that she was the void sent reaper that was living inside Xenos for like <laughs> end of heaven's ward all the way to the end of Endwalker. Is <laughs> it just, you know, <laughs> this may take rather a long time to explain, but bear with me. Oh, it's going to do a fade to black, isn't it? Ah! <laughs> I knew it. The 13th. After traveling to the edge of existence, I thought you'd keep your escapades closer to home for a while. Eh. But I suppose there's no stopping you. Not that I'm one to talk, of course. <laughs> the heart of an adventurer cannot be denied. You could have at least invited me, too. Surely there was room enough for me and Grahar in the Undersea Vault. Oh, you mean the two potential... Uh, waifu slash husbando options if this was a dating simulator it would definitely be Alize and Graha we went over this many times before ah <sighs> uh. hit her with the sorry triple dot which is at least but I thought you were busy is a little bit not patronizing, but I don't know. Maybe these are both bad. These are both bad options. Shit. Because if I say I thought you were busy, she's going to say, of course we were busy, but nothing would have been more important to us than helping you. Blah, 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 blah. I think I was going to hit her with the sorry. Just like, look at, I'm just a, I'm just a six-ish foot tall bun boy that was off to the far-flung reaches of a different universe and earth slash time, I don't know, anime mean, re reasons. Oh, it's fine. You can make it up to me on the next one. Well, okay, sure, fine. High five then? <laughs> but on a more serious note, are we sure it's wise to keep Xenos's former avatar around? I understand how you came to work together, but nevertheless, You're right to be cautious. I'm a void scent, after all. But do not conflate me with Xenos. To recall my time in his service, it angers me. Is that so? Hmm. I think we'll get along just fine, you and I. Doing little subtle animations. Oh, okay, okay. <clears throat> now that we are all caught up to the matter at hand. I see you, Creative Business Unit 3 at Square Enix, probably the only division of that company that isn't getting wrapped up in all of the NFT blockchain garbage. I see you making subtle little animation tweens. Even though this is just where it's another Final Fantasy 14 stand around in a circle and expatiate towards each other because it's just cheaper to do that way. So, man, I wish this game was a little more in-depthly animated. It would be just like that much better. But As we were about to resume our search in the void, 
I felt the presence of my sister Ajdaya in the source. Somewhere in the far north, perhaps even here in Galdemal. Hmm. If you have seen or heard anything out of the ordinary, I must know. As a matter of fact, we may have. You just saw a random dragon? <laughs> just like that? In recent days, we have had to contend with a surprising number of voids and, and not the lesser kind that occasionally manifest, but ones possessed of considerable power. Hmm. You think they might have been summoned? By who? We're not sure. But as Eulis reminded us, practitioners of a certain traditional Galian art rely upon void sent servants. Mm -hmm. The very same I believe you have mastered. While there are no known reapers left in Garlemald, we can't rule out the possibility that some are working in secret. Hmm. To summon not one, but several powerful void sent is no small feat. But if Ashdaya was indeed called from the void... Then it is likely the same party is responsible. Alternatively, the etheric confluence at the Tower of Babel may have triggered an expansion of natural fissures one could use to cross over. But I think that improbable, if not impossible. Hmm. Then we must assume these events have indeed been orchestrated. Well, summoned or no, we've been trying to track them to their origin. It's the mountains to the east, we think. Can you guide us there? Could it be a new zone? I doubt it. Mountains of the east. There's nothing up there on the map. I would, but the terrain is too difficult to traverse on foot. Nor is flying an option due to the winds. Okay. Too much ground to cover in any case. Is there no way to narrow it down? There is one place we thought to look first. An isolated village rumored to have once been home to a reaper order. That would indeed make an excellent start. Though the question of how to get there remains. Hmm. Eulis may be of assistance. Let us return to Camp Broken Glass and consult him. Okay, let's go see Soup Boy. Go see, let's go see Soup Boy. Let's go, my son. Let's go. Still have a lot of side quests to do in these zones. Slowly working through them. I think I finished. No, I haven't. My zone I was working on last time was Radzatan. That was the last zone I was working on. But there's lots of side quests still to do. Log in every now and then and just pick up a few of them and go clean through them. Try to get them all done. But there's just like, I don't know, what is it? 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, something like that. Plus, if they have chains. None of them are very difficult. Yeah, it's a little bit uh, snowy. But yeah, she's. <laughs> they set out here to the east. It's all this. There's nothing there. I could eighth right over, but flying over is also fine. Am I flying at max speed? Sometimes the game glitches out. It doesn't actually, if you hold forward while you're summoning, it doesn't actually uh, go full speed. It's also maybe a bit of like spatial disparity on how fast the game is moving since this is just 
Final Fantasy XIV flying is is that old school way. So I guess once you, which is one of the best features in like Dragonflight in World of Warcraft, is dragon riding. Pretty fun. It's very fast, very neat. You can't just float in the air though. That's the one thing about that's weird about it is you can't just float. You can't hover. All right, where is Soup Lad? There he is. Hello, Soup Lad. I had tempted, oh, I had tempered my hopes, but thanks to Alphano and Alize, we might yet learn something of Eshtaya. My son. My beautiful, beautiful son. Oof. Nothing appears to be out of the ordinary here at camp. Let us see what we find at this village. I expect it. It's been a while since you spoke to Eulis. He'll be glad to see you. Grad? He'll be he'll be glad to see you. He'll be glad to see you. The people are struggling to survive as it is. The last thing they need is for Garlemald to be overrun by Void Scent. A village of Void Scent users. Unless you think I have not feeling I have feelings on this, I don't. What others do is not my concern. I knew the twins wouldn't disappoint. <laughs> okay. There's a little dinosaur right here. <laughs> the miss player who's in the cutscene, I guess. Or at least was just in the cutscene. Hello, soup boy. Oh, not voiced. Not voiced, Euless. Okay. Little welcome surprise. I will voice him with my own voice. I see you're traveling with a large crew as usual. Yep, time to stand around in a circle and talk about plot. Not to suggest that's an inconvenience for us. We'd be happy to share our supplies with you and your allies, should you require any. Apologies if we interrupted, Eulis, but there is a matter we wish to discuss. Same with a nod. We just finished our routine briefing, so you come at a good time. This is about the Void Scent. It is. For what we can discern, they're coming from the mountains to the east. Practitioners of the Reaper Arts once lived in that area, did they not? Hmm. Yes, they had a village there in the Lapis Manalis Caverns. That's the name of the new dungeon. Shh, don't say it. The Scythe wielders forged packs with Void Scent, took to battle with the beings at their side. For a time, they played an invaluable role in our military, but the advent of Magitek saw them fall out of favor. And when some were unmasked as insurrectionists, the order was outlawed. The village is believed to be long abandoned. Well, speaking of their art, it seems you've picked it up. Who, has the, who was it that taught you? Interesting that it actually has a branching path if you've unlocked Reaper. I'm not in my Reaper subclass right now. Subclass? Job? But this is going to be a story reflection point if you've unlocked Reaper or not. Huh? I was taught by one of the people from... Well, I suppose it's neither here nor there now. What if you have to be Reaper for dialogue there, maybe? That'd be interesting. I can always replay it as a Reaper in my in-room and see if there's a different dialogue choice there, but... My sister has been taken captive by Void Scent. I sensed her presence in this land and have come in search for her. Or of her. If Void Scent have been sighted here, then I believe there is a connection. We should like to investigate these caverns you mention. But Alpha No tells us they are not easily reached. I'm afraid so. Deep snow and tumultuous winds rule out walking or flying. We can't walk. We can't fly. Uh. Then we dig! If you want to get anywhere, <laughs> you're going to need a Magitek Snowcraft. The last, the last remaining functional one we had has broken down. Still be over in Cerulea Eg Ingens? 
Where it was abandoned. Is there anyone who can fix it? Perhaps the former engineers in tra oh, Tapper's Den. I guess, sure. Their duty included transporting Ceruleum tanks to Jeterna Platform G using Snowcraft. I expect they had to ma they had to maintain a few over the years. Okay. Yes. It's worth looking into, I'd say. In the course of delivering provisions, I've come to know the people there quite well. If they can help us, I'm sure they will. Sure. May I ask you to accompany her? Given the present presence of void scent, it's best that we avoid traveling alone. You think I'm going to be able to go anywhere with that Alizé glued to my hip for the next couple of hours? Just going to limit break <laughs> three me in the face for not taking her on the last missions. In the meantime, will you not tell me more about the mountain? I would like to learn as much as I can before commencing our search in earnest. Come with me. I'll introduce you to someone who's well-versed in the local geography. Alizé, was it? I wish to speak with you. Big sister? In that case, why don't you come with us to Tapper's Den? We can chat on the way. Okay. Just a bun boy, a small elf woman, and a being comprised of pure void ether? Has this ever said before this game is pretty anime? Has I ever, ever said that before? I probably never have. I shall go and brief the contingent on the void scent issue. If they may too, they may, they too may be prepared. All right, where'd, where'd they go? They walked this far already in just one fade to black. What the heck? Oh. Oh, did they change something about... Oh, I think they changed... They have to be auto-flying now? You can't just... That's weird. You have to do auto-run to actually move the camera around while flying. That might be an option that was adjusted. If you want to eavesdrop, be my guest. It doesn't matter to me. What, eavesdropping? What the... I thought we were going... Traveling companions? Zero, come on. Damn. What was it you wished to talk about? Hmm. Why do you help these people? <laughs> what is it that you stand to gain? <laughs> I'm sorry? <laughs> yep. Yeah, that, that's a... <laughs> yep. You don't act on behalf of a higher power, nor are you bound by a contract. In spite of this, you help them. Why? Because we're nice? I don't... <laughs> Zero. I mean, all, her, all her many existences of life and death, all she does is either a contract for Ether, or she eats her friends to live. <laughs> so... And there I thought it was something serious. I help them because I want to. Because it's the right thing to do. But what do you stand to gain? You didn't answer the question. Well, you didn't see the end of the previous, you know, main MSQ, did you? Didn't I? I followed my heart. What I got out of it came after. Like the sick pink jacket. Was there anything else? If not, 
Let's keep moving. Right. <laughs> To act not out of obligation, or in pursuit of gain. To simply... live. And they survive like this. Armor looks so good. <laughs> I can't put the helmet on because I'm a bun. A lot of helmets don't work on on bun girls and boys. <gasps> I have a hunting log. Excuse me, ladies. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> I guess I do have yeah I do have hunting scripts on me or, or bills or marks or whatever sorry <clears throat> what were we doing again triple dot excellent we should get back to it but before we do are you all right zero did I say something that confused or upset you no I'm simply trying to understand your perspective. If you wish to continue, I am ready and able. Oh, well, that's a relief. This isn't the sort of place you want to mull over things. Not much further to Tapper's Den. I doubt we'll have much trouble finding an engineer when we arrive, so let's speak with the first one we spot. Okay. Zero's got... Only this is, this is by guilty by association, kind of in a way. Uh, I started watching Netflix Wednesday, the Tim Burton Adams Family Light show about Wednesday Adams. And I finished two episodes so far, mostly because I was curious the fact that it was already renewed for a season two in light of Netflix canceling like every show. Uh, but it was renewed. So I was like, hmm, is it actually pretty good? And you know what? It's pretty good. It's uh, very new age, very uh, hipstery, millennially combined, very referency. It's got a lot of like, oh, TikTok, uh, Snapchat, uh, Twitter, uh, social media. It's got all these little like quibbles from the current modern era. But that's mostly to put Wednesday in places where she can deadpan stare almost down the camera lens and deliver her dialogue. I mean, Jenna Ortega is fantastic so far. It's great. And seeing Christina Ricci as one of the teachers at the school. And she's like the OG Wednesday. Not the OG Wednesday, but depending on your... Because there was obviously one before. The old black and white Adams family. Well, I guess that was more... Because <sighs> there was the Adams family stuff that came after the Munsters. And then there was that... Adam's Family movie series. There was like two, was there two or three of them? That is sort of like where everyone thinks about the Adam's Family in like the zeitgeist. So this Wednesday show is really not a lot about the Adam's Family. It's really about Wednesday. Because the all other the characters are really tertiary to what's happening at basically a, a Hogwarts school, but for like werewolves and sirens and vampires and uh, ghost people that have telekinetic powers and weird shit and shapeshifters and stuff. <laughs> it's monster school. Yeah, but it's pretty good. The Wednesday show is about Wednesday. Well, people were, when it was first, I guess being digested, it's really not an Adams Family show. And there was obviously some consternation about just pulling apart all of this stuff about Wednesday Adams and not making it about the whole family. But again, only two episodes in. And I know like other characters show up, but yeah. 
I'm just saying it makes me think because zero before and the previous MSQ, I haven't, this show didn't exist, but now after watching the Wednesday Adams show, zero does have a bit of that type of energy <laughs> she has a little bit of it. It's obviously way more in a anime veil, but just that, that Daria esque character doesn't understand things only understands one, like one path, one prime directive. <laughs> doesn't understand anyone else outside of that kind of thinks that their way about it is the the best way about it but in her in zero's case it's just all she's known which is this whole arc i'm assuming she's gonna be going on now because it's the right thing to do this, this is one of the engineers i think spirited engineered you don't see the name above his head his name says spirited engineer alizé so obviously he, he would be an engineer Wait, I know you. You're one of those who roughed up the guards after you left. Your contingent friends came along. Our lives are a lot easier now, thanks to them. They understood our plight and offered to help. Well, they wanted to stay here or return home. For that, we are really grateful. We're grateful to you too, Alice. The trip across the lake is hardly pleasant, but you make it all the way to the same to bring us provisions. I don't know why that voice came out. I was stretching, I guess. But don't mention it. We're just glad you can help. That said, we are actually hoping to ask a favor of you today. It's a terrible life just living in this freaking frozen ass igloo cave, though. Man. <laughs> Shit. We need a Magitek Snowcraft repaired. The one abandoned in Cerulea Ingens. I used to think of Ingen from Jurassic Park. We're going to repair one of the dinosaur copters and go peruse uh, Isla Sorna. Want to come with us? We might. <laughs> we were told you might be able to help. Or the one to ask? The one to ask. Ah, oh, so you want to ride the mammoth. What? What? That's what we took to call the crafts on account of their size. As often as I use them on rigs, I know a thing or two about their maintenance. I'll see if I can get your mammoth wrong again. It's the least I can do to repay your kindness. I don't know why it's like kind of Western, but not. I don't know what's going on there. Wonderful. Please come with us back to Camp a Broken Glass. And we'll take it from there. So far, so good. Let's be on our way. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Someone, someone's, someone's damn whale mount. Good God, man. Stupid ass big whale face fills the whole cave. Uh. <laughs> uh. Uh, whew. Oh, goodness. Wait, why does Nico feel attacked? Why do you feel attacked? What happened? Sorry, I just phoenixed all over you. Thank goodness we were to find someone to help with repairs. Yeah, first name Spirited, last name Engineer. Don't you worry, the mammoth is in good hands. You mortals are so sensitive to the cold, or more sensitive to the cold than I realized. My body is made differently, so I feel nothing. Oh, you don't say, Zero? <laughs> so I feel nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Bum, 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 bum. Welcome back. I presume this is the engineer who will help us with the craft. I'll do everything I can to get her up and running again. But I doubt I'll be able to do so quickly. At least on my own, the mammoth is big and so are its parts. So strong back should make the work go faster. <laughs> you have ours. Hmm. Strong back Justinian. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Sorry. 
<laughs> oh. You finished learning about the mountain, I take it. Hit him with a nod. Aye. They have a solid grasp of the area, as well as the sight of the snow craft. My back is perhaps not as strong as some, but I should be glad to stand guard for Void Scent and other unruly wildlife. Much obliged, miss. Now let's all head over to the man with it uh, says with what needs fixing. Can I get some nodders in the chat and in the comment section? Nodders? They have matters well in hand, which means we can resume our duties. Would you care to assist us? Let's go. Side quest. What about you, Zero? I will assist you as well as payment for answering my question. <sighs> Probably something that demands payment, but we'd be glad for your contribution nonetheless. <laughs> Alphano has been added to the unending codex. Hold on, where was that again? This game has like 7,500 menus. Listen, collections. Unending Codex. Probably the biggest thing I miss in when I play WoW is not be able to just right click on menus and make them larger. It's so nice. So wait. So it added. So it added entries for them because they're finally back in the story. Holy crap, it's the, like, his entire synopsis? Very awesome. I guess because this is only building a, a codex entry as they re-enter in the post-Endwalker era. Yes. Persons, concepts. Yeah, because this is all in order. Because Tataro started us out on all this. She was the first person we talked to in 6.1. Sinian, Graha, Kral, Yastola, Heidelin, Uriange, Vritra. This is the, the dragon boy. Ah, before she know. Sucks, though. We're probably not going to have... He's going to have to be recast since his original voice actor passed. Xenos, Fan Daniel... Alphano and Alize. I love how it puts like a, a little job description. So Asian outcast. Primal, Scion, Scion, Mage, all rounder. All rounder? <laughs> I mean that's what he is in the the trust system. Ah, uh, coin keeper for Tataru. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm not going to do Tataru's quest line on stream, but she has an entire... There's two chunks of it now uh, for Tataru's Grand Adventure. Apparently, the armor set you get from doing this new chunk is quite nice. Quite nice. I can't say I understand Alice's answer, but a debt is a debt. At first, I didn't know what to make of Zero, but her frankness speaks to me. I like her. This is very, the, so not to go back on the Wednesday diatribe. Wednesday, as you might imagine, is Wednesday Adams. But the friend she is meeting so far in the show is like polar opposite. Wednesday is literally a black and white human being in, in appearance and tone and reaction, which is the whole point. It's gonna like, that's gonna crack away slowly, I guess. Whereas her, her roommate at the school is colors and like Luna Lovegood kind of like bubbly and her hair is dyed and she has different colored fingernails and she's a werewolf with her own problems and she's like into social media and writes a blog. So it's, it's the two different yin and yang juxtapositions. 
but this is, this is a trope that obviously is being played out a little bit in these two characters now too so indeed all right those are the first two quests the next chunk we will move forward with the next two msq chunks and then in the third section will be in the dungeon so if you're watching live you can keep watching live if you're watching this on youtube as a vod chunk and this is all for now and i will see you in the next one and if you're again watching live uh, i'll be back in uh, just a moment <laughs>